Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. But you know, we're going to make this video informative too. This one's going to be informative uh, because this is almost a spinoff of a video I did the other day discussing how to build a thick, full upper chest. Uh, even though mine was geared more towards athletes, more towards athletes instead of bodybuilders because bodybuilding is not my forte obviously. But I did that video and some people, several people, linked me a video from a guy called Superhuman You, whom I have never heard of. Now a lot of people say, Jason, I can't believe you always say you've never heard of these people. Well, it's true, guys, I haven't. There are a lot of fitness YouTubers coming up who have over 100,000 subs now who I've never heard of. I'm a little bit behind the times. I probably should work on that. But they sent me a video with him explaining why he doesn't bench press anymore and they're like, you're going to have fun with this one. You guys bet I will. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill of my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. I need to come up with a good nickname for him. I'll think on this one. You guys will love my nicknames. But, oh, a side note before we get into this. Obviously, I'm going to mention my Patreon again. Check that out in my About tab if you guys haven't seen it. It's where I discuss topics. might even pertain to some stuff in this video. Uh, that may or may not always be allowed on YouTube. That might be censored here, so I cover those things there. And there was some confusion in my current events video yesterday. So people are like, what do you mean you're not wearing pants? Does that mean you're naked? No, no, guys. But you guys need to remember, the majority of my audience is American. I have a pretty heavy British audience. 15 to 20 percent of my viewer base do live in the United Kingdom. I started my channel while I was living abroad in the UK. What Brits need to remember, I have an American audience. So if I use a word and it has one meaning in the United States and it has a different meaning in the UK, assume it's the United States meaning. Pants do not mean the same thing in England that they do in the Great Republic of Texas where I live. Totally different meaning. So if you guys don't know the difference, some people are probably confused. Uh, Brits, when I say no pants, I mean no trousers. See, because guys in America don't know that. They don't know that you guys call pants underwear. They're totally unaware of that, that we don't use the same word here. When we say pants, we mean what you guys call trousers. So hopefully that clarifies that. But if there's any doubt, just assume I'm using the American version of a word. Just like over here, if I were to say to people, I'm going to go do the washing up, love, they would have no clue what the hell I was talking about perspective. So, on to this superhuman you. All right, he broke down why he doesn't bench press anymore. And he talked about ugly chest syndrome. And um, all I'm going to say here, superhuman you, brother, first of all, your video actually wasn't that scientific. It wasn't that good. Uh, a lot of mistakes in it. A lot of mistakes in it from a biomechanics perspective. But I would say, you know, rather than your training advice, I think most people out there would want to be more interested in what your Trinovar stack is. Because that's probably more relevant to your upper chest development because you actually don't really know a lot about the biomechanics of the chest. And that's okay. We're all on our journey learning together. We're all learning together. And it's kind of like what I broke down in that video earlier. Uh, the one that I did for guys who are natty, but developing an upper chest that's proportionate is difficult for naturals when they're compared to guys who are on that there trinobar. Because you have more androgen receptors in the upper chest belts and things like that. And I'm not saying this guy is, is big because he's not really that big. Uh, but, you know, in terms of that look, that look is kind of there. And then he made a video I saw just looking at his playlist right there on the first page. Video about how to get 3D delts. Okay, and that's back to another point. If you have that 3D Photoshop delt look, that's indicative of being not natty. It doesn't matter how big you are. It's irrelevant. That's just how it goes. That doesn't come from training. There are other factors involved in that. So, on to the point, though, of, you know, he said, look, the bench press just creates a, a big lower chest. It, it's not even that great of a chest exercise. Uh, no, that's simply not true, brother. The bench press is an all-around upper bodybuilder. And this is kind of like this whole concept of where, where bodybuilders completely lose the plot. They get caught up in this, this exercise is best for this muscle. No, why don't you guys just pick six or seven exercises that build everything? And if you're proportionate, 
you're still going to be proportionate. And the reason I covered that with the upper chest the other day myself is why. Because athletes who are unproportionate, and this is kind of what you go back to where classic aesthetics come from. Classic aesthetics came from athletes. People who have a well-developed balanced musculature for sports and strength sports and things like that historically had a certain type of look when they are proportionate. And that is a big part of classic aesthetics. Well, lack of upper chest development is usually indicative of very poor overhead pressing strength. Very poor overhead pressing strength tends to go hand in hand with a lower heavy chest. And so what I had recommended is what I recommend to most people for overall shoulder health because here's the point we get to. If your chest pressing strength is disproportionately strong to your overhead pressing strength, you also tend to have shoulder girdle imbalances that will, again, lead to injury. This is not good for balanced strength and staying injury free for athletes. Bodybuilders could learn some stuff here. This is valuable. So by keeping your overhead pressing strength proportionate to your chest pressing strength in around a two-thirds ratio and training them in a one-to-one -one ratio, you'll correct those issues and you will tend to rebuild that upper chest up. But anyone who claims that they can't build a, a very large chest on the bench press doesn't perform the exercise correctly, which is what we see a lot of with bros. Almost every bro who struggles to build a big chest off of the bench press, what do they do? They touch and go or they bounce. They don't pause bench. They don't keep their scapula back. And what people need to remember is people say, well, isn't that about powerlifting? Well, how do you power lift? How do you lift the most weight possible through any given range of motion? Assuming you don't cut range of motion, which is a power lifting tool, you need to recruit the most muscles possible. So if you aren't maximizing your chest recruitment out of the bottom of a bench press, you're also not going to lift as much weight. So, yes, you need to maximally recruit your chest on a bench press if you want to bench 400 pounds. It would be a real good idea because, like with any other lift, the more muscle fibers that you engage and recruit, and there's a lot I talk about with that, with technique, mental cues, things like that, you need your pecs to recruit maximally. You need your triceps to recruit maximally to lift a maximum weight. No, you don't want them to be 80% activated. That's not beneficial to moving the heaviest weight possible. You need them to fully activate. You need all as many upper threshold fibers available as you can get. But yeah, the bench press is fine for building your chest. The problem people get is the disproportionate strength. Now, the problem is that superhuman you jumped in and he jumped into Brett Contreras' data. He linked an EMG study uh, and it's one I'm intimately familiar with. So as soon as I saw it on the screen, I knew exactly where he got it from. That's from Brett Contreras. That was his study on chest. And he's saying, well, they show the dumbbells activate the, uh, the pectorals more, the mid-pec, more than the flat bench. Well, that's cool and everything, but you didn't perform the dumbbells in a way that maximally activates the pectorals. The reason dumbbells on certain chest exercises have the potential for more pec recruitment and that's not always true because if you end up getting a lot stronger and you move more weight through a similar range of motion the barbell will become stronger again you have to understand there's a relative strength component there so no that's not an absolute in terms of that uh, there is also the weight you are moving through a given range of motion does matter and barbells do have more potential there. But where dumbbells went out is range of motion. In other words, you, the barbell stops when it touches your chest, right? You're down here, that's as low as you can go. Dumbbells can come lower. You can get another couple inches deeper, all right? The deeper stretch in some cases might allow for a myotatic or a stretch reflex. Well, he didn't go full range of motion. He's doing that typical bro dumbbell press where he's at 90 degrees instead of any, again, slight pronation of the wrists that allows you to get deeper, get a little lower down and get the deeper stretch. He had them turned all the way out and he stopped short. He had no more range of motion than a barbell. How is that's not going to engage any more chest muscle fibers? None at all. In fact, what he did is inferior to doing a heavy barbell bench press. So he started off with the wrong stuff, and here's the thing. He's talking about science. Talking about science, right? Well, why would you do a superset? What does all the research on supersets show? 
it produces inferior muscle growth. Study after study, go look at all the stuff of Brad Schoenfeld study on rest times between sets. All right, you're doing three exercises back to back. We know based upon all available data that resting longer produces more hypertrophy. Why? Because it allows for more total workload. All right, that is what the newest scientific data emerging says. The same thing that strength athletes have known forever. Bodybuilding and hypertrophy world is catching on to. Long rest times allow you to use a heavier weight for the same number of reps on subsequent sets. And what we have found is that when eight-week studies are done, those longer rest times, those people gain more muscle mass. Supersets take you the other direction. In studies that have looked at it, supersets produce inferior hypertrophy. They produce inferior hypertrophy. You're basically just doing a drop set. This is not ideal because it reduces the amount of tonnage that you can do. It reduces the amount of total work that you can do with a muscle. This is not ideal. Well, the problem is that he mixed three exercises, a dumbbell press done incorrectly, not getting a full range of motion, so it has zero advantage. It's now inferior to the barbell with a pullover and then a weighted dip. Now, weighted dips are fantastic. Weighted dips are an amazing exercise uh, for your chest, interior deltoids, triceps. I, mean, I think weighted dips are one of the greatest exercises ever invented. It's an all-around exercise. It's up there. It is up there. I'm not going to argue with that. But essentially, he's acting like you're getting upper chest involvement from a pullover. You're not going to grow anything. This is, this is bodybuilder nonsense, not based on real human physiology. You're not going to grow your pecs with a pullover. You're not going to grow pecs with a pullover. But I feel a stretch in it. Okay, well, when's the last time we have any reasonable data? Reasonable data. I'm not going to say no data. Reasonable data showing that this normal stretching with weights that you can actually move, I'm not talking about extreme stretching with extremely heavy weights, you know, such as, again, a pullover thing holding you at a 1,000 pounds for 12 hours straight. But actual normal stretching with weights you're capable of lifting never been found to produce hypertrophy. Nova, I talked about dips again. He's going to come over and be like, I love dips, Daddy. We covered that last time. You already let everyone know that you love dips. All right. But back to this point. It's because he doesn't have hands. He can't grip the bar. So he's got a little weighted vest. He can do dips with his palms. So that's why, you know, it's species S, I know. But he's a dog. He doesn't understand. It's okay. It's okay, Noah. We know you love dips. I'll go put your harness on and put your little five pounder in there later. All right. Back to the lifts. Uh, pullovers are not capable of inducing hypertrophy. Not any significant amount for someone who's already trained. Maybe for a total novice. Maybe a small amount. So all he's doing is using that middle exercise so that he can rest between the dumbbells and the dips and call it a superset. This is absurd. It's absurd. And the whole point was that he was talking about the bottom heavy chest. So he does flat dumbbell, pullover, which isn't going to do anything, and then weighted dips. We're right back to bottom heavy pecs. We're back to bottom heavy pec development. I mean, maybe had he come in and, okay, if he doesn't want to do the standing press, my, the standing press is an amazing upper chest exercise. In addition to just being an amazing exercise, it shouldn't be optional. The press, as it was historically called. In, in fact, I'm going to say if you don't do the press, you're probably a pussy. Don't even act like you lift. Let's just throw that out there. But that being said, it's kind of like the deadlift, guys. I don't deadlift. It's like, yeah, yeah, get out of the gym. You're taking up space then. We don't need you. Same, same way with people who don't perform the press. Choosing to be mediocre and weak. You know, you have a right to that choice, but you need to stay and get out of the way of people who are actually serious about training and getting strong. But that aside, that aside. All right, you don't want to do the press. Well, where's your upper chest development? You have made all this whole video about not benching because of lower chest dominance. And you, maybe you don't even have any heavy incline work. Had you, you know, said, okay, I just spent, you know, 
the last 12 weeks getting my incline bench with a pause and my scapular retracted up to 300 pounds for a couple reps. Okay, that would be something. That, that would be an alternative to doing this, the press. But there was no upper chest work. So he goes through all this video about why he's not bench pressing because it builds his lower chest and this whole superset is still just a lower chest and tricep workout. I mean, which is fine. Those are, I mean, had he done them correctly, dumbbell bench presses are almost as good as fly bench. Weighted dips are amazing. I'd have no problem there. But there's still nothing in there that's going to fix the imbalance. There's nothing there to fix the imbalance except Trinovar. So back to the point, bro. Just get out your drug stack and quit talking about training. You know, just be honest. Just be honest. It would go a long way. People would appreciate it. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.